Welcome back to Tutorial Meet. I'm going to cover the most annoying things in Illustrator. So a few of the things that we'll start off with is, for instance, the pen tool. Pen tool is pretty simple if you get to know to use it, but the things that you'll really hate, and I have something here that I can just draw from because I like Batman, is how do you get angled curves around something. So say if I'm drawing here and I draw this around here and I'm and I want this to stop right here instead of continuing on how do you do that so how, in order to do that you have to hold the alt key down or the option key on a Mac and click it and it cuts that handle off so you can go in a different direction so meaning that if I'm drawing and I want this and I want this to go this way now instead of creating a curve there is I'm going to let me undo that I'm going to click it and it cuts off that direction handle and then I can go the opposite direction so that is something that's very useful another thing that people are aggravated about is how do you grab these handles very easily you'll do that through the settings so command or control K if you're on a Mac or a PC respectively is you'll go to selection and anchor tool and then you'll click this last box it makes the direction handle slightly larger so you can grab them otherwise they're really small by default and it's really hard to grab these little tiny points don't know why it's default like that but control K selection units and select that last couple boxes for anchors and handles and then you'll see it's a little bit easier to grab next is the gradient tool so gradient tool will piss you completely off if you're a Photoshop user because you come over here and you click the gradient and nothing happens under the gradient tool under the left hand toolbox. You'll click it and you'll be like, why isn't this working? I'm clicking it, I'm dragging it, nothing's going on. In Illustrator you have to always assign a color to an object. It's an object based program, not a raster based program. So you have to go to your gradient palette if you do not see your gradient palette, remember go to window and come down here to gradient. So you click the gradient palette and then click either this box over here or the big box and it assigns a gradient to there. Now I can use my gradient tool all I want to. So gradient tool will piss you off. Sorry, that's Illustrator. It's been like that ever since Illustrator's been a thing. The next thing I'm going to talk about is how do I get an artboard inside of an artboard? this will piss you off if you're trying to figure it out quickly so say I have this object and I want to create something else but I want this object to be on its own little artboard well if you go to the artboard tool shift U, you can click on the object or double click on the object and it makes it you can click on it once and it makes a second artboard or you this this is something that you've tried to do you click and drag and try to make another artboard and it won't let you do it within an artboard tool so you gotta come out here and bring it in to wherever you want it to that is not the way to do it the way to do it is to hold the shift key down and then drag and then you can let go of the shift key because if you hold the shift key down it keeps in proportion to itself so you want to let go of the shift key after you start it then you can make an artboard within the artboard without going outside of the boundaries on that so remember shift key and then drag and then let go of the shift key and then you're good all right the next thing that will piss a lot of people off and I hate to say it but it's this new round um, corner tool so round cor corner tool is cool because so if I had a perfect square and I click it I can make a circle out of it or I can make other shapes and to make the there's three other shapes you can make concave and convex and then um, beveled so if I hold the alt key down and click on any of these white dots it cycles through them so if I let go of the alt key though it disappears so you gotta be careful about that sometimes it will uh, illustrate tricky in the fact that I gotta keep holding the the alt key down while I'm doing this until I start dragging so say if I want to come in on all sides then I let go of the alt key and then you can come in equally on all sides you can create a simple shape like that or if you're just going to create the bevel and you can create a diamond really quickly instead of making a box and rotating it sometimes that's just as quick so remember the alt key trick when it comes to the corners you can do that to each individual corner if you select the corner and then come over here and then you can make one corner something else 
Okay. Another thing that I've been hearing a lot of complaints about is when people are trying to do something and this pops up, like this, this grid pops up. It's the perspective grid and everybody's like, how do I get rid of that stupid thing? Why does it always pop up? How you get rid of it is I have a shortcut is shift control I, or you can go up to view perspective grid and then then show your take your perspective grid off which is hide grid so I do that quite often when I'm trying to do something and I don't like when it comes up unless I'm going to use it so shift control I will get rid of that another thing that people notice popping up is bridge every time they go to click something shortcut wise they hit the buttons and bridge opens up and if you go to file and if it says browse and bridge alt control O which people are for some reason hitting that a lot. I'm seeing that on the internet and it'll open in bridge. In order to get rid of that shortcut, you'll go in edit, keyboard shortcuts, under tools, go to menu commands, file, and then where it says browse and bridge, I can delete that. I do not want that. I'm going to click the X next to it, actually. And then I can say OK. And then that way that shortcut is not there any longer. I do not like it. Transparency grid. So sometimes you're working and this transparency grid shows up like this and you're like what the crap I can't work that way and you've seen the shortcut when I went to view and then high transparency grid or show it is shift control D so shift control D will get rid of it and that will that will save you a lot of time remember your shortcuts another view that people doesn't like very much is the overprint view which overprint works if you're a printer if you're not doing any printing overprint works if you're trying to separate artwork out but I am not overprinting this so it looks like everything's in white no matter how much I zoom out and that's because I am in overprint view so get rid of that go to view overprint preview and there's a shortcut for that auto save is another feature that comes with Illustrator the new CC versions a lot of people's asking, well, how do I get it to autosave? Because it's crash, and Illustrator will crash no matter how good your system is, and it'll come up there and it'll say, um, you just lost all your work, two hours work, screw you. So how do you get around that? Is you'll bring open your your preferences, Control or Command K, and then you'll go to File Handling and Clipboard, and there it is. Automatically save recovery data every so often. Um, if you have a really chuggy system sometimes this will make it a little slower especially in Photoshop I've turned mine off in Photoshop because it makes it go a little slower even though I have a big rig but I use it in Illustrator it saved my life more than once I put an hour's worth of work into something and then when I when it opens back up again after it closes down since I have this on it'll automatically reload the last tabs I had open and the last versions they had saved it so I have mine set every five minutes because I'm on Illustrator so much Another thing that you can use inside of um, Illustrator by default, so say if I had this stroke and I'm going to zoom down, I want to make it smaller, the stroke's not getting any smaller. So how do you make the stroke get smaller because it's staying that 40 points right now and how do I make it when I scale it, how do I make it bigger or smaller? So I cannot get around that unless I go to the preferences. By default it's turned off, don't know why, but if you go to command or control K, under general on the right hand side it says scale stroke and effects. So if you had effects like a Gaussian blur on this, it will scale that also. And patterns, you can have a pattern on there and it will scale the pattern. So you want to make sure this is checked. So when I scale down, it'll scale down the stroke as well. So those are just a few things that really irritate people in Illustrator and I tried to help you as much as I can. So if you have any comments of stuff that irritate you that you want me to cover, I surely will. Just leave the comments in the comments box below. Thank you.